My name is Rauf Boulis. I'm the chair of the mathematics department. I'm also involved in course redesign at the system level as a system, University System of Maryland course redesign fellow. The main role of these uh, fellows is to spread the uh, word about course redesign. Course redesign is, is a way of rethinking uh, the, the, the methods we deliver large um, enrollment courses. Um, traditionally, um, large enrollment courses uh, have presented problems to faculty, institutions, and students uh, alike. And <coughs> traditionally, the, the two uh, models uh, that developed are either uh, a large class model, uh, like uh, a lecture model with two or three hundred students listening to a professor, or the model that uh, Towson uh, primarily adopted, which is uh, um, a very large number of sections of the same class, <coughs> enrolling uh, 30 students or, or so. In many cases, th these models uh, are not ideal. Um, um, o over the years, it, it, uh, they didn't work, especially for certain kinds of students. The, the large lecture format where a professor is lecturing hundreds of students, typically the professor would adjust the level of the presentation toward the median uh, student in the class and, and, and a little bit below the median and a little bit above the median, but all the students who are either uh, advanced or struggling uh, will, will not benefit much from the lecture. Um, the, um, the, the model of um, small sections and repeated has its own drawbacks as well. Uh, course drift is cited nationally as, uh, as a big issue where, where the student's experience is fundamentally different from one section to another. Course redesign is for large enrollment classes, typically gateway or entry uh, classes that uh, suffer from um, poor learning outcomes that can benefit from uh, um, certain aspects that technology, advances in technology can provide uh, to improve learning outcomes while um, either maintaining the cost uh, the same or hopefully uh, decreasing the cost. The concept of course redesign started in the late 90s and over the years uh, certain models have evolved and right now there are six different models and um, <coughs> the, the one used um, most of the time is what's called the replacement model and, and we found this to be suitable in our case. So. We started in 2007 um, with uh, two courses in developmental math, and we used the replacement model for these two courses, where uh, one a class hour uh, was taken out of the course and replaced by um, an open access computer lab with, uh, that's uh, supervised by instructors and graduate teaching assistants and what's called undergraduate learning assistants. Students appreciate the immediate feedback and the instant help that's available to them in an individualized manner. Most of these courses are uh, drill-based and it's skill-based, so um, students uh, typically don't do well in these courses because they don't practice enough 
and they think they master the material just by looking at the professor doing problems. Uh, when they do homework, they usually get feedback when it's kind of too late, uh, a week later or two weeks later, and th they lost um, track of where they are. So a student uh, doing something um, on the computer um, and getting stuck w would raise their hand. The, the help is tailored to their own question. And, and this is good, especially in math, where um, engaging the student is much more preferable than showing the student. For, for these two courses, the developmental math, we have shown increase in uh, achievement. We have gone up from 66% pass rate to 75 or 76% pass rate. Um, students do not drop as much as before. Um, so that, that's a higher retention rate and, and course evaluations usually indicate um, student satisfaction with the, uh, the aspect of uh, being able to uh, practice and, and do this mastery learning in general. We, um <coughs> we ever since a thought of uh, extending this experience to other courses. So last year we started doing this for our Math 115, which is the basic math for the sciences. We have just finished piloting the course in the fall and we're doing full implementation. Uh, now well, we are happy with the results. Uh, I should say that in Math 115, we are doing a more rigorous assessment from the early assessment of developmental math because uh, we and the system have learned a great deal ever since uh, about assessment, what to measure, and how to conduct <coughs> a successful experiment and collect reliable data. For Math 115, we have collected good data and what we are running a reliable experiment with experiment group and control group. Uh, we have um, designed multiple surveys to students before taking the class and during and after taking the class and, and the results of these surveys uh, are very uh, favorable. I, I have to recognize the fact that course redesign is not for every course and not for every discipline. In mathematics, it, it's very natural for lower division courses that are based on um, practice and drills. So a department chair or a professor have to think, um, have to learn what, what course redesign is and look at the models and look at the common characteristics that nationally have developed out of hundreds of um, projects um, across the nation in course redesign and, and then try to see if this would be of benefit to their courses. And I would encourage people to experiment and, and just try um, w with a section or two um, if, the, if they think that this might work and staying where we are, um, just doing our own thing has proven n not to be um, very sustainable uh, in the long run. In a more uh, larger scale, it seems that college education is, is becoming very important and access is becoming a big issue now. So the, the, the challenge is how to edu educate uh, all these students. That's a good question to entertain and it's a challenge for 
all um, educators and education policy makers. <laughs>